Hey folks, um, it occurs to me um, that a lot of people don't like to read and I get asked all the time about my opinion on uh, what weapons somebody should use, they're getting a CHL, they're trying to figure out what they want to do, how to carry, what to carry, um, what ammo to use, all that stuff. Um, so a while back I took all the research I did when I got my CHL and I compacted that into an article. It doesn't cover everything but it covers the basics. Um, that's in my blog um, that's going to be linked over on the side of the video uh, under more information but I'm going to go through the blog and basically kind of read it to you and summarize some stuff and if you want more information you can go read the blog. Um, so yeah, if I'm not looking at the camera I'm looking down actually looking at the topics in the blog. So. All right, so, uh, by the way, the blog is titled Lead Jedi. That's another alias that I use aside from Murden. Um, comes from my old Xbox gamer tag. Uh, okay, so to start the article off, I'm going to define some criteria. Okay, to be fair, for this to be a, a fair and a thorough assessment, we need to establish some criteria to talk about uh, <clears throat> a few other topics. I should also state that uh, we're doing this evaluation for the purpose of concealed carry, not which gun uh, to shoot a charging wild boar with, or which one looks the most like a rocket ship, or which one looks uh, closest to something Batman would use. <clears throat> Those may be good points for you, but they're beyond the scope of this analysis and ultimately not important factors in a defensive situation. So here we go. Big gun versus small gun. Big question comes up all the time. For someone new to concealed carry, this is probably one of the top issues. Most of us almost uh, automatically think we need to carry a small gun because it needs to be concealed. While there's some truth in that, <coughs> concealment is important, yes, but, that's, uh, but what's more important is the ability to shoot comfortably and accurately, especially under stress. A buddy of mine has a subcompact. It's a tiny thing. I could put it in my pocket in a pair of baggy shorts or, uh, or jeans and you'd never know it was there. Great for concealment. My cats are going nuts. Uh, trying to get into the fish tank. Uh, so this subcompact is great for concealment. Uh, however, uh, if I take out my big clod hopper meat paw hands, uh, uh, sorry, if I take out my big clod hopper meat paw hands, uh, and I'm in a hurry, it's a real pain for me to get a positive grip on it. It's uncomfortable and it makes me feel like a pro, fly, or a pro ball batter using a little league bat. It's just way undersized for my hands and I can't get a good positive grip on it. <clears throat> bad grip translates to bad shooting. Because I can't get a positive and consistent grip on the weapon, my shots are all over the place. That's very bad. You're legally responsible for each and every bullet that leaves your gun. If one of your rounds goes off target, even in a justified defensive shooting, and you hit a bystander or some other property, guess what? You're probably going to jail. At the very least, you've got some uncomfortable legal uh, <coughs> hearings coming up. You can hem and haul about concealability all day <coughs> and all night, but when it comes down to it, you'd better carry what you can comfortably and accurately shoot over what's easier to put in your pocket at the end of the week. You can always adjust your carry style to compensate for a larger weapon. You cannot, however, make the gun magically grow bigger when you really need a good grip to save your or your family member's life or defend your property or whatever. The moral of the story is to carry what you comfortably or what you can comfortably and accurately shoot. If you have smaller hands and you're more comfortable with a small frame weapon, then use that. If you need a larger weapon, then carry a larger weapon and figure out the concealability issue later. Your first priority is to be able to be effective with your weapon. Uh, a quick word on concealment. Every person I've ever seen get a CHL has been obsessed over printing. Uh, printing is being able to see the outline of the gun um, such that a reasonable person would assume it's a weapon. So it's like, you know, it's outlined on your clothes and that sort of stuff. <clears throat> um, okay. Every person I've ever seen get a CHL has been obsessed over printing and making sure nobody can see the outline uh, or any random corner bump uh, 
or hint that there's something under the clothing. You begin to obsess over it. Uh, I went through this too. Uh, all we, go th or we all go through that phase. Stop worrying about it. Seriously, stop worrying about it. Uh, give your situation the 10-year-old test. If you're carrying your weapon and a 10-year-old child can tell that you're carrying a gun without telling them what to look for, then you should rethink your carry strategy. Otherwise, you're probably just fine. <coughs> a bump or two here and there is easily explainable <coughs> and, and common in this day of pager cell phones and uh, miscellaneous bat utility devices on everybody's belt. If anyone asks you, hey, is that a gun in your pants or are you just happy to see me, then just tell them you're happy to see them. That's the end of the conversation. Uh, well, it may be the end of the conversation. Uh, if you want to be more polite, just throw up a, a big red social flag that you're not comfortable talking about it and just say it's a medical device and leave it at that. Odds are they'll take the hint. If you don't think uh, you can say that with a straight face, just try to rationalize it to yourself. This weapon could one day save my life. It means it's a life-giving device and it makes it a medical device. Rationalizing is great for, for doing stuff like that. Okay, on to the next major topic. Caliber. In my opinion, you should always carry or use the largest bullet size you can comfortably control. And caliber is, we're talking about bullet size here. For me, that's a 45. <clears throat> my wife can shoot my 45, <clears throat> but she's all over the target and it makes her jump every time she squeezes the trigger. Uh, now, when she picks up her 9mm, she can outshoot me. With some practice on speed, she could be downright surgical with a, with a 9mm. She's tried a 40 and that basically felt, felt the same as a 45 to her. She's very comfortable with her 9mm and it makes her jump, uh, and it doesn't make her jump. So that's what she decided to carry and she's really good with it <clears throat> because she practices. Now I have no problem double or even triple tapping shooting rapidly. A 45 and I'm fairly accurate uh, with it so that's what I carry. I have the forearm strength to carry a 50 caliber if I really wanted to, uh, but who can afford to practice with 50, 50 caliber rounds? That can be pretty expensive. Um, I also would would probably hesitate if I had to uh, um, to, uh, to pull the trigger on a 50 caliber simply because of over penetration issues, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily do that with a 45. So that's another reason for me to carry a 45. Um, let's see. Oh, you have to go out and shoot the gun with various calibers to find out what you're right. All right. Go out and shoot various guns with various calibers to find out what's right for you. Believe it or not, different guns have radical different feels to them, <clears throat> and shooting the exact same ammo, oh yeah, different guns have uh, radically different feels even if you're shooting the exact same ammunition. So talk to a friend or go to a gun shop that lets you uh, shoot stuff. You know, a lot of times, like at my local... Uh, shooting range that you can actually rent or test shoot uh, weapons to find out what's right for you and what feels good, both for caliber and weapons. As a general rule though, I would not go any smaller than a 9mm because it's not going to have adequate stopping power and there's generally not much uh, need to go to go above a 45 unless you anticipate being mugged by a raging water buffalo. That leaves the obvious choices of 9mm, 40 and 45. Those other caliber, there are other calibers out there, but those are probably your best options, especially for self-defense. Okay, accuracy. <clears throat> Asking how accurate a gun is, well, that's kind of silly, really. Um, sorry, got off tangent. Asking how accurate a gun is, is really kind of silly. So long as you pay above a minimum price of, say, 250 bucks. Uh, the quality of the pistol, you can all for the as long as you pay more than 250 bucks for a quality pistol, the gun is almost always going to outshoot you. Um, so asking asking how accurate a weapon is is kind of nonsensical as long as it's a quality weapon. Now, if it's a 25 dollar, you know, uh, knockoff, there may be some uh, some variation. But if you, uh, yeah, so. It doesn't really matter how accurate the weapon is. What matters is how accurate you are with the weapon. The gun will consistently shoot, generally uh, speaking, um, better than you do. Reliability. That comes down to two factors. 
Don't buy a trash gun and put plenty of ammo through your gun to find out what it likes to shoot. A trash gun, super cheap, say sub $200 range, will almost always have problems, even with good ammo. Likewise, even a good gun that you paid high dollar for may have problems with certain kinds of ammo, especially cheap ammo. Uh, <clears throat> every gun is different. You have to try various types and manufacturers of ammunition uh, <clears throat> before you find what's reliable. For instance, my Taurus 24745 doesn't like range reloads or Winchester white box, very cheap ammo. Uh, the primers in those types of ammunition, ammunition don't always go off uh, when the firing pin uh, in my gun hits them. But if I buy slightly better ammo uh, than that, the rounds go bang every time. I like Blazer, uh, um, yeah, Blazer ammo, B-L-A-Z-E-R. A more expensive gun may fire the primers on cheap ammo, uh, but have a problem ejecting or cycling uh, different types of ammunition, hollow points are especially uh, uh, culprits here. Each gun is capable of having unique properties, so you need to find out what your weapon likes to use. So go practice with it. Magazine capacity. <clears throat> Without a doubt, the logic to go here uh, is uh, more is better. If you're uh, an ex-Navy SEAL and you can kill 15 men with nine bullets, you may be okay carrying a gun with, nine, with a nine-round magazine. But you need to ask yourself what you're going to do about the tenth guy when you're out of ammo. It's always better to have rounds left over than to face off against a bad guy and hear the gun go click when you pull the trigger. Choose a weapon with at least a 12 round capacity in my opinion. Warranty. Quality weapons aren't cheap. They're not always expensive but they're certainly not cheap. Uh, you're probably going to sink in uh, at least $300 into your daily carry pistol and at least another $50 into a good quality holster. Those aren't cheap investments, at least not on my budget. Uh, do your homework and choose a weapon that's got a good reputation with features you want and a manufacturer that will stand behind the weapon. Uh, this is one of the big reasons why I go with Taurus, and this is just my, uh, my opinion. Uh, the warranty, they warranty the guns uh, um, essentially forever, no matter who owns it. Uh, that tells me they believe in their product and they stand behind it, and it's a good investment. If a manufacturer isn't willing to give uh, weapons a transferable lifetime warranty, maybe you should ask them why they don't believe in their products. It should be noticed that Springfield Armory has a limited lifetime warranty, but it's not transferable to subsequent owners as of the time I looked at their warranty. Uh, Taurus does transfer. Beretta has a standard one-year one warranty. I've been told it transfers, but I haven't actually gone to look. Um, I'm, I'm unable to find uh, warranty info for Glocks or any other manufacturer. Uh, if you guys have any, please post it in the comments. Safety features. This is hands down the most important aspect of the weapon you choose and will greatly dictate the weapon you ultimately go with, if you're smart. I tend to try to figure out what the worst case scenario might be and then try to plan for that. My worst case scenario involves having to use my gun to defend myself or my family <clears throat> it involves me having to physically hold an attacker back with one hand or maybe hold the door closed uh, while trying to draw and shoot at the same time. In such a scenario, I want to be able to draw and shoot with one hand. I don't want to have to use both hands to chamber around. There are some super elite maneuvers you can use to chamber uh, a, uh, a round in a semi-automatic weapon. Uh, with one hand, I'm not going to drill with those and I don't think they're reliable, so it ain't an option for me. I need the round to already be in the chamber. That means I have to be comfortable carrying a weapon with one round in the chamber and cocked. However, I want some extra security. I want something that keeps some random bit of clothing or anything else from pulling, pulling the trigger unexpectedly and having the gun go off when I don't want it to. Nobody wants to get shot in the groin. For that, I need a manual safety switch on the weapon that I can operate that's nowhere near the trigger, but with the same hand I'm going to shoot with. That's basically a thumb safety. To recap, my scenario rules state that I need to be able to draw and fire with one hand. That means I need a round already in the chamber with the weapon cocked and ready to fire. However, I don't want the gun going off prematurely, so I want a manual thumb safety that can be operated with the same hand I shoot with. 
a thumb safety is, is uh, obviously uh, what we want to go with. Ergonomics. You want anything you're going to shoot with to feel good in your hands. Uh, and it should also seat in your hands fairly naturally. It should consistently go in the same location without you having to fuss over it too much. It should feel like a natural extension of your arm or hand. To me, that means it should be comfortable and natural or organic. Uh, it should curve to my grip instead of forcing me to curve to its contours. This will allow more comfortable uh, practice as well as more accurate shot placement. <clears throat> a gun that feels right is important. However, because this can be somewhat subjective, I can only give my opinion and I will not rate this as a pass or fail. Uh, I'll use poor or great on uh, the, the weapon ratings that I give later in the, the review. Semi-auto versus revolver. For those who don't know the difference, revolvers are uh, Old West style guns. They were the original pistols. They have a round cylinder uh, that holds the bullets and rotates the, the bullets around to the barrel every time a round is fired or the uh, pulling the trigger rotates the barrel or rotates the cylinder, sorry. Pros for this, they're extremely reliable. Uh, they almost never uh, jam. Excuse me. Cons, they have limited round capacity and longer than average reload times. That can be offset with extreme practice or, or a lot of practice, but not something I'm going to really put a whole lot of time into myself. Semi-auto guns are the traditional guns we see in modern movies and are by far the most popular gun designs. They use magazines, aka clips. Don't shoot me. Some people call them clips. I know that's not the real name. A clip loads a magazine, but they use magazines that usually, uh, that usually hold uh, more rounds than a revolver will hold. Uh, <clears throat> they're more likely to jam and they have uh, faster reload times. I need to reread uh, this article. I messed up on it. Uh, semi autos are, uh, are more likely to jam, but they have faster reload times. So There will always be two sides to this thought. It boils down to capacity versus reliability. Semi autos will almost always beat a revolver in round capacity and usually in reloading time. However, revolvers operate on a simpler design principle, so they're inherently more reliant and less prone to jamming. You could entertain both arguments, uh, and both would be correct. It's just a matter of uh, what you think is more important. I personally side with semi-autos, so long as I put enough time in with my pistol that I know what ammo feeds reliably. I think, uh, <clears throat> I think that can be just as good as a revolver in reliability, and... Uh, <clears throat> It gives you more uh, ammo capacity. Your mileage may vary, but it seems uh, like a good choice to me. That being said, I would never smirk at someone choosing to carry a good revolver simply for reliability. I just hope they really, they're really really good shots and they don't run out of bullets before they run out of bad guys. Okay, I have more detailed information on popular models, but I'm just going to hit on some models that I did some research on. And people are just going to go nuts, I'm sure, on comments for my ratings. But this is my opinion. If you don't like it, voice your opinion or, uh, on comments or do your own videos. I'm just giving you my rundown. <coughs> and this is also geared for concealability, uh, for concealed carry. So, the classic, you can't talk about gun designs without talking about the 1911. And generally, I pass the 1911. Uh, I give it a, a rating and pass. Um, for caliber, it's available in several choices. I've seen 9mm and 45, so that meets our criteria. Um, capacity, all those standard magazines, uh, or although the standard magazines don't carry 12 rounds, aftermarket magazines with higher capacity are available, so we can pass it on. Capacity, warranty depends completely on the manufacturer. Re reliability, 19s or 1911s are very, very reliable. Um, they have a thumb and a uh, uh, well, some of them have a thumb uh, grip, but they all have a, uh, a grip safety, which is uh, or a beaver tail safety, which uh, is, I would say that's reliable um, to, um, to use that instead of a thumb safety. Um, I personally don't like shooting 1911s though, because they're uh, uh, they're not very ergonomic. To me, it feels like shooting a, a two by four. Again, that's just my personal opinion. If I actually I'm looking for a 1911, Taurus is about to come out with one, I'll probably buy it, but it's just going to be something I go to the range and shoot to have fun with. 
uh, clocks. I know people love clocks. They are very, very reliable. Um, they'll shoot pretty much anything. You can freeze them and all that fun stuff, and they still shoot. Here's my big problem with a Glock. Ergonomics and uh, safety features. I know they have the, the safety features built into the trigger, but I want a secondary safety that's not on the trigger. Uh, that's just what I'm comfortable carrying with, um, or how I'm comfortable carrying. So I, I would never actually carry a clock unless I paid a, um, uh, a gunsmith to put in a separate thumb safety for me, which you can do. It goes between five and five hundred and nine hundred dollars to have one installed. You can buy kits and do it yourself, but that voids the warranty, which throws your warranty out. If clocks came with thumb safeties, and um, you can get aftermarket sleeves to improve the ergonomics if you really want to, then I would carry a Glock. Barring that, I ain't gonna do it. Sorry guys, I just don't. I don't dig the whole Glock thing from that perspective. But they are very reliable weapons, um, and they have a huge following. You can also get a lot of aftermarket parts for them, and just about every gunsmith knows how to work on Glocks. So they have pros. I just don't like them. Now, a weapon that I do like is the Beretta PX Storm, uh, and I believe the uh, you could all, you can compare this to the Springfield XD weapon too. Um, they all pass for caliber. They all pass uh, for capacity. Warranty depends on the manufacturer. Uh, again, I want it to be transferable. I'm not sure that Beretta and Springfield are both transferable. So uh, there are fairly reliable weapons. Um, <coughs> the XD has a grip safety, and then <coughs> yeah, and the new XD45 um, is available with a thumb safety. Actually, I don't think it's the 45. I think the new XDM, which is only nine millimeter, has a thumb safety. Uh, hopefully they'll come out with uh, thumb safety for the other models. Uh, the PX has a thumb safety, so that's good. Um, both feel really good shooting. Um, the PX to me feels better. It's more ergonomic. And I think it actually comes with interchangeable back straps, so you can change the, the grip and feel. The XD could use some work uh, as far as ergonomics, but it's, uh, it's not bad. I could actually adjust to it. Um, and the Springfield is American made. If and I gotta say I'm, I'm a big supporter of buying American. If the Springfield comes out with a 45 with a thumb safety, I will probably and they maintain a, a decent warranty. I'll probably switch from Taurus to Springfield simply because it's American made. So um, you can't go wrong in my opinion with a Beretta PX or a Springfield XD. So that brings us to Taurus guns uh, for conceal and carry. If you're gonna if you want to do a revolver. I recommend the Judge, and uh, it's it's a revolver. Um, you can load either 45 long Colt, which will damn near stop a charging rhino, or you can load uh, 410 shotgun or a combination a combination of each. You can actually alternate. So if you've got shotgun rounds and a high-powered uh, uh, bullet round, uh, man, you can. You know, that's the perfect self-defense weapon, in my opinion. Capacity is an issue, and it's actually a little bit heavy, so those are trade-offs. Um, the grip feels great. It comes with a, they usually come with a Taurus rib grip. So, if you want a revolver and you go that way, I recommend the Judge. The Taurus, uh, excuse me, the Taurus 92 series. Uh, it only comes in nine millimeter, so if you want nine millimeter, that's great. If you want a 45, that sucks. Um, <clears throat> I understand it's uh, that there are variations of the 92 model that use the same design that uh, that are in 40 caliber. I haven't seen those, so I don't know. Again, I'm not an expert in the 92 series, so uh, it passes in uh, capacity and it has the Taurus warranty. Um, so those are good options. Um, I actually bought my mom a 92. There was a video up uh, I did on that. Uh, they do have a th standard thumb safety, and the ergonomics, while well, not perfect, are pretty darn good. So the 92 is a great option. Of course, there's the 24/7 Pro, which passes uh, all my criteria. I've done other videos on that, so I'm not going to dwell on it. There's the 24/7 OSS, with it, which is essentially uh, an ambidextrous model of the 24/7. It has a longer slide and a longer barrel, um, theoretically for greater accuracy, and it comes in different colors. So 
uh, it has a decock or two. That's not a bad option. The, uh, this is not out yet uh, as of the making of this video, but the last gun I want to mention is the Taurus 809 series. Um, to me, it almost seems like uh, the perfect defensive, uh, especially concealed carry weapon. Uh, it has, it's essentially a 24-7, um, but it has an exposed hammer, which I actually really uh, kind of like. Kind of maybe from the, just the coolness factor, but I like having an exposed hammer. Um, and it's got a decocker built into it because it's got the exposed hammer. Uh, just about all the other features are pretty much the same, so that's not a bad option either. Um, if you guys know of another gun that you recommend, uh, throw it up in the, um, uh, in the comments, or better yet, do a, re a review of your gun and post it as a video response for this one. So, um, if you guys want to read the whole primer with spelling mistakes that I'm seeing now that I'm looking at it, uh, just go to the more info and I'm going to put a link to it over there. Alright, hope this helps somebody and feel free to send this video over to a friend if um, anybody ever asks you what they should carry, especially if you're concealed carry. Alright guys, have fun.